all of us have experienced sickness of some kind. But God says that He is the healer, and He still heals today. Skeptical? When she prayed for me, I felt something move inside my foot, and I don't have pain. It just went away. It was just tingling inside me, and I'm not sure that I've ever had a feeling like that before. Experience healing for yourself at Healing Is Here 2017. They show you the Word in such a simple way that it would be very hard not to understand. <laughs> and once you've experienced it for yourself, you'll never be the same. Healing Is Here 2017 at Karis Bible College in Woodland Park, Colorado, August 15th through 18th, 2017. Register online at healingishere.org. I'm healed. We are healed. When he prayed, I said, I'm receiving it. All right, good afternoon. Praise God, it's good to be back. It's good for you to be back. Hallelujah. Uh, man, I appreciate all the, the uh, enthusiasm. Uh, but, you know, Ellie, if you could just work on it a little bit more. Just, you're almost there. Okay. You know, I, I didn't quite fall asleep. No. No, I'm kidding. No, that was great. I appreciate that. I love to see that kind of personality because I don't have that. So, I was born without a personality. So... Praise God. Well, it's ex yeah, thank you. It's exciting to be here. And I think this is going to be good today. I'll tell you what. Um, the word is alive right now yes. as when it left the mouth of God. And I want you to have a sense of expectancy today. And those of you watching online, welcome. I hope the sound is working. Uh, I want you to have a, a sense of expectancy because that is the environment for faith to go to work. That's the environment for the word to take root. That's the environment for healing to take place right now, or in some cases to begin right now, but there has to be a sense of expectancy. There's, I have it. I, you know, I, I, I believe something good is going to happen in every single life today. I really believe it. And I have a message that has stirred me up, and actually the message is about being stirred up. Uh, I was reading, if you want to turn with me, uh, go to Acts 17, verse 16. Acts 17, verse 16. Praise the Lord. It says, now while Paul, excuse me, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. And I, when I read that, and this has been some time back, I thought, there's something here that I want to know more about. His spirit was stirred within him when he saw something that was ungodly. Yeah. We have a spirit. So I started to do a study of, of the human spirit, of the spirit that we have. And I'm going to give you a snippet of that in these first few minutes. We are spiritual beings. Now, I understand when we are born again, we are a new creation. That's speaking of our spiritual condition. We become one spirit with him, that's speaking of our identity. And yet there's still a humanness to our spirit. There's, a, there's the God part of our spirit and the human part of our spirit. And in a sense, we still have the capacity to be stirred or to be passive in our spirit. And so I want to relate that to health and healing today. But it's interesting to me that Paul's in Athens and he sees the city wholly given to idolatry, or in other words, he sees something that is ungodly, and his spirit is stirred within him. And then he goes on to preach this incredible message in Acts chapter 17. Should that be any different when we see sickness? When we see sickness, whether it's in our body or in someone else's body, shouldn't our spirits be stirred? because we see something that is against God. It isn't reflecting God. And I think too often we assume that being at rest, 
in our position in Christ or being at peace means that we become lazy or passive. And that isn't what it means. Uh, I'm, I'm a rather, I guess you could say, a rather quiet person. Uh, my, I have a more quiet personality. And I'm not like Ellie. <laughs> uh, I wish I were more like that. But, uh, and so it's easy for me to just kind of slow down in my spirit. Slow down in my emotions. I don't get real excited about anything. I'm kind of like Andrew, you know, in that sense. I, I relate to that. And so I have to consciously be aware of my spiritual condition. Not that I'm in a bad place, fallen from grace, none of that. Just simply, am I stirred up? Or have I gotten a little bit too quiet? Sometimes we can come into a place of faith where our faith sort of goes through a metamorphosis and it turns into blah. We think we're in faith because we know so much. But are we in faith and is because of that faith is our spirit stirred because of something we see that doesn't reflect the will of God? I want my spirit to be stirred. All right, so let's look at some other verses here. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 6.20. 1 Corinthians 6.20. Paul says, For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. Now, that was, that's, that's interesting. Glorify God in your body, or in other words, do things that are pleasing to God in, in your body, the way you live, the way you behave, the way you conduct yourself, glorify God in your body, and glorify God with your spirit, which belongs to him, but you have the potential to glorify him or not glorify him with your spirit. I thought, well, that's a head scratcher. If it belongs to him and we're one spirit with him, then are I in a good place? Well, yeah, you're in a good place, but you have the potential to be stirred in your spirit man, in your inner man, and to glorify God with your spirit. Even though it already belongs to him, we still have the capacity, the, the human part of our spirit still lies within our, uh, like I'll say, control. And we can use our spirit to glorify God. Amen. So I'm just kind of building a, a small little teaching here on this. Let's go to another one. Let's go to Romans 12. 10 and 11. Romans 12, 10 and 11. It says, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Fervent in spirit. Now, I know times when I haven't been fervent in spirit. I wasn't backslidden. I was just simply not fervent. But this is exhorting us to glorify God in our spirit, to serve him, fervent in spirit. And then I go back to Paul being stirred in his spirit when he saw something ungodly. And in my heart, in my mind, what I'm getting from this is that there's a place in the Lord in which we can either become passive and live by fate, or there's a place in the Lord that we can become fervent and truly live by faith depending on how what we see impacts us. When Jesus ministered to the multitudes, he says in, in, in many places he saw the multitudes and he had compassion. Compassion is a fervency in spirit. It wasn't just, oh, I really feel bad for them. It wasn't an emotion. I'm not talking about emotions. I'm talking about your spirit that a fervent spirit is going to see people and not just say, amen, be warmed and filled. A fervent spirit is going to get involved. A fervent spirit isn't going to accept the status quo. A fervent spirit isn't going to accept sickness in your body or in anyone else's body. A fervent spirit is going to recognize something that is not flowing with the will of God and there's going to be a stirring on the inside. And it doesn't mean, folks, it doesn't mean when you have a fervent spirit that you have to be like that. I can be very quiet on the outside and I can be really ticked off on the inside. And I don't mean emotionally, I mean in my spirit, I see something that is not right. 
And I might not appear to be excited on the outside, but on the inside, there is a prayer battle that is, that is beginning. There is a, a speaking forth of God's will, declaration, quoting promises, remembering scripture, because I have become stirred in my spirit. And I think, trying to tie this back to healing now, I think many times we get used to the status quo We've gotten used to the physical limitation, the, the doctor's prescriptions, the vi hospital visits. We get used to something and we no longer are fervent in our spirit. We have become accepting of that which the enemy has stolen from us. Boy, that bothers me when that happens. I'm gonna share some testimonies here in a moment. But let me, let me give you another one here. 1 Corinthians 14, 4. Excuse me, 1 Corinthians 14, 14. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. My spirit prays in the spirit to God. So I can do that whenever I want to. I make the choice there. So I can choose to pray in the spirit. My spirit prays. I can choose to be stirred up in the spirit. These aren't some things that just come and go uh, according to God's sovereign will, as somebody might think. These are things that we have within us, as it says in Ephesians 3.20, according to the power that works in us, amen? God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or think according to the power that works in us. We have a spirit that has been reborn by the spirit of God that is still within our, I'm using the word control because I can't think of a better word right now, our dominion. And it's we who can decide to pray with our spirits. It's we who can be stirred in the spirit. It is we who can be fervent in spirit. We have this potential, depending on how we interact with the things around us. If we see something ungodly, does that stir us in spirit? If we see sickness, does that stir us in our spirit? Or is that just another thing and we just go on our way? When, uh, when my wife and I were expecting our first child, and many of you have heard this story, but uh, she was pregnant and had serious complications. We go to the doctor, uh, he does sonograms and, and what have you, and then the next day I went back, left her in bed, went back for the results, and he said, let me show you the results, and he had the thing on the screen, and he says, the, the fetus, that's how he called my child. The fetus is dead. The sack has collapsed. There's no life. It will pass. And something within my spirit, I was only 25 years old. And I was, I'd been born again for five years. And so I was still a rather young Christian. But something within my spirit said no. I didn't work it up. It, it wasn't that the word of the doctor gave birth to faith. It's that the faith that was inside of me because of the word of God reacted to the word of the doctor. And when the word of the doctor came, the word of the spirit said, no. And I won't tell the, the whole story here, but, but I didn't share with my wife what the doctor said. Uh, and several months later, my son was born. Perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. Now, if I had said, oh man, well, we'll try again, which I'm not putting that down, but if that had been my reaction, I don't think I would have my oldest son. Because my spirit was stirred within me. I'm gonna tell some other stories. Now, some of them might, are embarrassing, but it's just us, right? Plus the rest of the world. So, uh, I, about nine years ago, I, I was dealt with a, a kidney stone issue that if any of you've been there, it's not fun. And this particular issue was going on for nine months, which I think was significant. Uh, anyway, I thought it was several kidney, it turned out to be one mother of all kidney stones. And, uh, and so in the ninth month, <laughs> Uh, I came to, I, I won't go through all this, the, the, the days and hours and weeks of agony, but 
I came to a place of one night on a weekend, I think, I just, I couldn't take it anymore. And I said, Betty Kay, my wife's name is Betty Kay. I said, Betty Kay, either kill me or take me to the emergency room. I cannot do this anymore, I'm, I'm done. And I got to the emergency room and literally I walked in like this. I was in so much pain. The policeman thought I had been shot or stabbed. He didn't know what, he, and so he took me in and then the nurses saw me and there's 50 people in the waiting room and she says, you, inside. And so they just took me right on in and uh, they said, would you like some painkillers? I said, yes. <laughs> both, both arms, industrial strength, go for it. You know? And so anyway, they, they put me in an MRI and, and they said, you have a, a very large kidney stone. There's no way this can pass. I said, okay, what do you need to do? And they said, this is what we're going to do. And then they described it to me. And I said, my, then my spirit got stirred within me. <laughs> And I said, check please, I'm out of here. That, no. And I know it's, it's humorous, but something within me said, uh-uh, no, I'm gonna trust God. I'm gonna believe God. Thank you for the drugs, I feel better. <laughs> but I'm going home, no. They said, this isn't gonna pass. I said, I'm gonna believe God. Two days later, passed with no pain. Wow. With no pain. My spirit, my spirit got stirred within me. Not because I got faith from the doctor, it's that the faith that was in me reacted to what the doctor said. And my spirit was stirred within me. Now something a little bit more recent is that I, I went to uh, have some things, some skin issues frozen off uh, last year. And at that point they looked in my ear, my left ear, and they said, oh, this, this one looks different. This doesn't look good. Now, I've had malignant melanoma back in 1987 and you know, delivered from that, but I'm, I'm aware of those things. And so they said, this thing in the ear doesn't look good. I want you to go in for a biopsy. Went in for a biopsy. Uh, they called me and said, this is a, a cancer that needs to be dealt with. And probably what will happen is that after it's taken out, you'll have to have some plastic surgery. Something about that just didn't sit right. What are you talking about? I mean, is it going to be all mangled looking? I don't know. And so, so, and I said, okay, thank you very much. And I hung up and I told Betty Kay, I said, uh-uh, I'm believing God. I'm not going to do that. Something got stirred within me. They sent me a certified letter telling me this is what we diagnose. This is what you have to do. It's in the trash. I decided... But it, it, um, again, I want to be very clear. These aren't emotional things. These are spiritual things that, that were trying to come against me, but my spirit being filled with God's word is reacting to this, and within I'm saying, no. In the name of Jesus, no. I have not been back. My ear is as smooth as a baby's bottom. All right? Don't you put your finger in there. I'll t just take my word for it, okay? It is completely healed. In the name of Jesus. You have the Spirit of God within you that is mixed with your spirit, but you can choose whether to be fervent or be passive, to be stirred or to be lazy. That is your choice. Again, I'm not saying, well, I think I'll just try this. I'm not saying that to get worked up emotionally and mentally. I'm saying, be so filled with God's word that when another word comes against your, the word of God in you, the word of God in you responds and you're stirred and you say, uh-uh. Some of us have been in situations of, of affliction for so long that it, it sounds like, well, I don't even know what to do now because get in the word of God. You've become adjusted I've gone through being adjusted to something. I had to adjust the way I was walking for a while because it felt like my foot was broken. I didn't know, but I couldn't, I had to change my gait, my, the way I stepped and the way I put weight on my foot. And walking through airports especially was incredibly difficult. And one day in, in an airport in Houston, I just had enough. And I, just, I said, I am going to walk normally. I don't care. 
as, as we say, if it kills me, you know? I don't care what, I, I'm going to walk normally. The first step, normal step I took, it almost killed me. The second step I took, I, was, I think it was the second or third step I took, instantly healed. Have never had that problem again, and yet I had been willing to adjust and change the way I walk for weeks, if not months. And I could have gone on living that way forever until my spirit got stirred within me. See, this is what I'm trying to get across to you today. You can continue to put up with whatever it is you're putting up with, or you can believe that the, the thing in you is greater than the thing in the world or the thing in your body, the thing, forgive me, the spirit of God within you, he who is in you, and if you're in, in, in union with he who is in you, there's a part of that union that is under your control. You can be fervent in spirit. You can be stirred in your spirit. You can decide enough is enough. You can begin to proclaim God's word. I'm going to give you some, some scriptures here. Praise God. Think about, uh, think about Bartimaeus. We don't have to look these up. Mark 10. Bartimaeus, the, the, he called out to Jesus, and the people said, hold your peace, be quiet. And it says, he called out or he cried out all the more. He was stirred in his spirit. His opportunity was not going to pass him by. The people that took the guy up on the roof, they could have said, well, it's too crowded today. We'll try some other time. Right. No, they were stirred in spirit. They went, made a way through the crowd, got up on the roof and dug a hole in the roof. See, when your spirit is stirred, you will find a way. You will find a way. You will quote God's word. You will proclaim. You will stand fast and having done all stand. And by faith and patience, and the patience isn't passivity, but it is relentless persistence, you will inherit the promise. If you can get your spirit stirred up. James 5.16 James 5.16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. If there is an effectual fervent prayer, there's an ineffectual passive prayer. You can be fervent. And again, this isn't, doesn't mean you have to get emotional. That, that may be the, your personality, that's great. But it doesn't mean emotional, it means your spirit is reacting, it's allergic to sickness. Yeah. It is reacting to sickness. It is saying, not in this body. Right. Your spirit is rejecting the this, this sickness. Your spirit's gotta reject it before your body is gonna submit to that. You, you have got to come to a place in the spirit of God where you're so in tune with God, so in tune with his spirit, so in tune with his word, so in tune with his promises that your spirit just recognizes this isn't of God. I'm not going to keep it. This isn't mine. This is the devil's. So let me give you some scriptures here. I'm gonna run through these rather quickly. Just things that you can decide to do. Psalm 23, verse four. Psalm 23, verse four. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will, there it is. I will fear no evil. That I will is who you really are. I will, in your spirit, I will, even though the doctor has said, I will feel, fear no evil. So you get stirred up. Psalm 55, 16. Psalm 55, 16. As for me, I will call on God, and the Lord will save me. Amen. See, this is how we need to start talking. You start talking like this, your spirit will get stirred up. I will call on God and the Lord will save me. Psalm 56, verse four, 56, four. In God whose word I praise, in God I have trusted, I will not fear. Amen. Well, you may need plastic surgery on your ear. Uh -huh. And I will not fear. 
And I don't know what your ears look like, but I'm pleased enough, <laughs> all right? Because I chose to not fear. Well, Barry, but didn't you get a certified letter in the mail? Yeah, I did. Could that have put fear in someone's heart? It could have in someone else's heart. But it didn't in mine. Because my spirit was stirred. Psalm 57, 7. Psalm 57, 7. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. Meaning, it isn't moving. I will sing and give praise. Praise God. Are, are, we, are you getting this? That you decide your position in this battle. Is your heart fixed? Or is it, you know, well, then you know, I got the certified letter. I can't make those decisions for you. And there are times when I have not been in that position and I've gone to the doctor and gotten help. All right, so I'm not putting down going to the doctor and getting help at all. What I'm saying is, there are some things that are what I call mortality maintenance. Can anybody get that? Okay, just maintenance of this treasure in an earthen vessel. And there are some things that are trying to kill you and you need to get your spirit stirred up. Psalm 59, 16. Psalm 59, 16, but I will sing of your power. I will sing aloud of your loving kindness in the morning for you have been my refuge and escape in the day of my trouble. I will sing of your power. See, this is your spirit making a decision. When I pray in the spirit, my spirit prays. When I sing in the spirit, my spirit sings. When I worship in the spirit, my spirit worships. I get stirred up in the spirit. Man, your body can't take too much of that. It's going to have to start submitting yes. to the will of God. Amen. Psalm 80, 86, 7. Psalm 86, 7. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you and you will answer me. Man, talk about some, that's Hebrews 11, 1 we were talking about a few minutes ago. Faith is, well, this is it. It's not, I will call upon you and maybe you will answer me. No, you will answer me. This is an assurance. This is a spirit that is stirred up. Yes. Psalm 116, verse 9. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. There's another one that says, I will live and not die. Yes. Praise God. Just get decided. Just get decided. I've heard what the doctor had to say. God bless the doctor. But I will live and not die. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Yes. Isaiah 61.10. Isaiah 61.10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. I will greatly. If you can greatly, you can not greatly. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of of salvation, and salvation includes healing. Praise God. Praise God. Is this blessing to anybody so far? All right. Here's another one. So one last one in this, this section here. Psalm 4, 8. Psalm 4, 8. I will both lie down in peace and sleep. Some people, because of their affliction, can't even sleep can't even rest because of fear that is consuming them and worry and anxiety and financial pressures and all of this stuff. But when your spirit is stirred up, you can still sleep. That's right. You have peace with God. Amen. You will praise him. You will sing of his power. You will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and come out the other side. Amen. Praise God because your spirit has decided to take control over your emotions, over your mind, over the, the, the words of others, the fears of others. You're, you have to get in the word, folks, and get this in you so that when those things come against you, your spirit reacts and says, no. Praise God, I will live and not die. No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah catch my breath. In Luke 138, Luke 138, Mary has just received a visit from the angel. And 
the angel tells her that she is going to conceive by the Holy Spirit and, and give birth to a child who will be Jesus, the Savior. And this is how Mary responds. Luke one thirty eight. and Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Her spirit responded to what the angel was saying. And her spirit came into agreement with the word of God. Be it unto me according to thy word. So I'm going to segue into this. That having your spirit stirred has very much to do with you choosing to be in agreement with God's word. Do you believe his word or not? It says in Isaiah 53, 4, by his stripes we were healed. In 1 first, first Peter 2, 24, we were healed. We are healed. Do you believe it or not? I'm preaching to me while I'm preaching to you. Be it unto me according to your word. Well, how do I make that happen? You get your spirit stirred up. To choose, I will believe Isaiah 53, 4. Amen. I don't care what my flesh says, my emotions say, my, even my mind may be in conflict with this, but my spirit is really fine-tuned to this. Amen. I will believe that by his stripes I was healed and I am healed. I will believe that. I choose to believe that. I will proclaim that. I will sing his praise. I will talk of his power. I will, I will, I will, I will. Do you really believe his word? Be it unto me according to your word. It says in Acts 10, 38, that Jesus went about healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Healing all. Well, if you had been there, would you have been healed? Yes. All right, well, he's still here. In fact, he lives inside of you. So choose to believe that, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Choose to agree with his word. Choose to be a person of faith. Don't wait for faith to just sort of kind of, it might just pass by and you just kind of get into a faith for a second and, oh, that felt good. No, become aggressive. Become aggressive. If you're dealing with something in your body, choose to believe God's word. Choose to get your spirit stirred up. Choose to talk about it, sing about it, praise about it, pray in the spirit about it. Become aggressive. Don't become a victim. Don't become someone who chooses to adjust. Here are some other ways we could phrase this. She said, be it unto me according to thy word. What many of us do, we say, well, be it unto me according to my fears. We may not say it out loud, but it may be going on inside. Be it unto me according to my feelings. I don't know if I feel it. Be it unto me according to the news. Well, they said on TV. Well, I don't care what they said on TV. Amen. See, that's when you know you're not in the Word. You're in TV. Yes. Be it unto me according to the doctor's report. Well, I've got the best doctor in the county, and he said, I don't care. I mean, God bless him. If that's the word you want to live by, yeah. amen. Yeah, that's good. But be it unto me according to his word. Get stirred up. Choose. Do, you're, you, we say we're believers. Do we really believe? Or are we believing the news? Are we believing our feelings? Are we believing what Aunt Gertrude said? Are we believing yeah. everybody else? Yeah. Be it unto me according to what the bank statement says. How many of you want to make that confession? <laughs> no be it unto me according to what God's word says yes. be it unto me according to well I ran out <laughs> whatever be it unto me according to your word right. when Jairus came up to Jesus he said if you will come to my house and lay your hands on my daughter she will live. They start off on the way. Along the way, someone interrupts Jesus. Precious time that Jairus felt he had very little of to get Jesus to his house. And now this woman with the issue of blood comes up and the whole thing stops. 
And now he's dealing with the woman with the issue of blood and, and she gets healed. And I'm sure Jairus is looking at his watch, you know, <laughs> tapping his foot. And so they finally get started again. And then someone comes from his house and stops the crowd and said, don't bother the master anymore. Your daughter has died. Now, what had Jairus said? Right. If you will come to my house and lay your hands on her, she right. will live. Right. That's what Jesus, that's what motivated Jesus. And so a contrary word came. Ah, you're late. She's dead. It was that woman's fault. Yeah. Nothing we can do now. She's gone. And Jesus said to Jairus, because he could probably sense what was about to happen. Jairus is about to destroy this whole thing with a word of unbelief. And he said, don't say anything. I'm paraphrasing here. Only believe. Believe what? Believe what you said the first time. Keep your spirit stirred up to believe that when I go in and lay my hands on her, she will live. It doesn't matter what her condition is. Your confession was me being there and laying my hands on her, she would live. It didn't, you didn't say if she's alive still or if she's dead or whatever. That doesn't matter, dead or alive. Stick with what your spirit put, put forth in the beginning. Don't change it now just because you've gotten some negative report. Anyone here ever received a negative report? Yeah? What happens when you get a negative report? The fetus is dead. No, it's not. Where did that come from? It came from the spirit of God within me that recognized the work of the devil and said, I'm not having any part of that. And this is what Jesus is saying to Jairus. Do not fear, only believe. Do not fear. How do you, how do you demonstrate fear? You say something. So basically, he was telling Jairus, shut up. Don't open your mouth. You're going to mess it up. And some of us need that advice. Don't open your mouth. You're going to mess it up. Go into your spirit and get stirred up and find the word of God and the promises of God and begin to proclaim them. I will live and not die, or my loved one will live and not die. And bless God, the spirit of God in me is greater than the spirit of infirmity in my loved one or in my body. And I am going to speak to this thing and I am going to take authority over this thing and I'm not gonna shut up. And your relatives will say, you need to shut up. And you're gonna say, I'm not gonna shut up until I see the glory of God. That's when your spirit is stirred within you. Be it unto me according to your word, O Lord. But the doctor said, be it unto me according to your word, O Lord. But the banker says, but the, the lawyer says, but this, but this. Be it unto me according to your word, O Lord. Well, it's hard to say those things, folks, if we don't have the word inside of us. We've got to have the word of God inside of us. It doesn't take, you know, I've been walking with the Lord now 44 years. It doesn't take 44 years to come to this place. You can come to this place two seconds after being saved if your spirit is alive to God and you recognize the things of darkness and your spirit says, uh-uh, and you begin to speak even you may not know anything, but you know that's not right. That's not right. That sickness isn't right. That's not God's will. But I've had it 20 years. It doesn't matter. It's not God's will. That's why it says the effectual fervent prayer. Let me pray for you. That's why I exhort the prayer ministers, get fervent. I don't mean you have to pray louder. I mean you have to be stirred in your spirit to recognize this is of the devil and we're going to come against it. That's how, we, that's how we win these victories over sickness. Praise God. Now, one more thing I want to share with you. Because a lot of times people question whether they have enough faith. You know, I've been there. I've felt that way. You know, oh, Lord. And we try to work it up. We try to mentally believe. Or we try to emotionally believe. But there's something, it's just not, we're just not getting there in our spirit, man. 
And I came across this. Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 7.25. It says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing that he ever lives to make intercession for them. Now, if anybody is praying an effectual, fervent prayer, it's Jesus. And he ever lives to make intercession for us. So some of you may feel like, well, I don't know if I'm, I'm at that place yet of my spirit being stirred, and I don't know if I have enough word in me, and I don't know this, and I don't know that. All right, well, start the journey. But in the meantime, Jesus is praying for you. He ever lives to pray for you. Let me show you that again. And then I'll try to explain it. Romans 3, verses 3 and 4. Romans 3, verses 3 and 4. It says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. God has faith. The faith of God, it says. God has faith, and he ever lives to make intercession for us. So I said, Father, explain this to me. I want to understand, how are you praying? Why do I even need to pray if you're praying? And then I came to the place where Peter, Jesus said to Peter, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. Now, personally, my own theology, that was pre-cross. I don't believe the enemy has that place anymore to accuse us because our intercessor took his seat at the right hand of God. I don't have time to teach that. But at that moment, Satan still could accuse Peter. And he says he's demanded to have you to sift you like wheat. And Jesus said something here in Luke 23, excuse me, Luke 22, 32. Luke 22, 32, he says, but I have prayed for thee. I thought, okay, here we go. How does Jesus pray? That your faith fail not. Wow. That's how Jesus is praying for us. He's praying for us with an effectual, fervent prayer that our faith would not fail, or in other words, that we would remain stirred up by the Spirit of God that's within us, that we wouldn't grow passive, we wouldn't draw away, we wouldn't fall back, we wouldn't get lazy, but that he's praying your faith would not fail. Can you see Jesus up there praying for you, interceding for you, knowing what's inside of you is greater than every problem that you face, and yet seeing that some of us start to get cold and hard and drift and fade, and he's praying your faith fail not. And all you have to do is decide that enough is enough. And here's what, I'm going to close with this verse. One last verse, Jude 120 or verse 20. But you, beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. I'm reading from a different version there, but pray in the Holy Spirit. Or when, you're, when you pray in tongues, your spirit prays. You get built up, you get stirred up, and you don't have to be a punching bag for the devil. You become the puncher. And you begin to react, and things that come against you, your spirit say, you don't have to conjure this up, your spirit recognizes that's not God. That pain, that sickness, that symptom, that diagnosis, that's not God. And I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to receive it. With long life, he will satisfy me. Till I'm satisfied, I'm still here. Not going anywhere. I have a purpose. And these are decisions that we have to make. I will praise God. I will sing of his power. I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will lie down and sleep in peace. I will. Because I'm praying in the spirit of God. And my spirit is staying alive. My spirit is staying charged. My spirit is staying awakened to the things of God so that I don't get lazy and passive. And when negative things come my way, I say, oh, well, that's a bummer. <laughs> yeah, it's a bummer. What are you going to do about it? Well, I guess, you know, I mean, a certified letter. That's pretty important. No, be it unto me according to the word. Not unto a certified letter Amen. from a doctor. God bless the doctor. Other people need that. I didn't. 
because my spirit got stirred up. Has this helped anybody? Praise God. Anybody stirred up? Stand up. Stand up. Praise God. The prayer ministers can start to come forward if you like, but I'm going to pray with you and for you. And man, when you, if you come up here to be prayed for, don't mope up here with your head hanging down. Come up here knowing you've got the victory. Praise God. Let's go before God. Father, we love you. And Father, we love your word, which is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And we recognize, Father, right now that within us is the spirit of God. And within it, it is mixed with our spirit that we can choose to be fervent in spirit. We can choose to be proactive in spirit. We can choose to respond to the things of the world, the negativity of the world, with the spirit of God. And we can resist and rebuke and renounce and proclaim how it's going to be because it's going to be unto us according to your word. Praise God. Praise God. Father, there are infirmities in this room and those that are looking on. The enemy has taken some ground. Perhaps we, because of our lack of knowledge or whatever, but we, we aren't walking in a lack of knowledge anymore. We recognize what the enemy has taken and we will take it back. We will take it back. We will respond in the spirit by faith and proclaim your goodness, proclaim your victory. And I proclaim now victory over the physical bodies in this room and, and those watching now. In the name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus, if you're watching this, if you're sitting here, standing here in this room right now, be stirred up. Take it. Take what God has given you. Take what Jesus went to the cross to give you. Take it actively, proactively, aggressively. I'm not going to put up with this, whatever this is, anymore. Be it unto me according to your word. You're praying that my faith fail not. And Jesus, I'm responding to that prayer. Right now, I am stirring myself up. Hallelujah. 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 I speak to the spirit of infirmity. You foul thing, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. However you're manifesting in this room or uh, those that are watching, I don't care how you're manifesting. Go to the pit. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Release your victim now in the name of Jesus. And I speak health and healing and restoration and recreation into every physical body that is watching or or present here today. The life of the word, the medicine of the word, the quickening of the spirit, moving through every cell of your body, just see your body responding to life, the life of God, touching your heart, touching your lungs, touching your brain, touching your kidneys, Life, 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 touching your intestines, touching every organ, touching your bones, spirit of arthritis, gone in the name of Jesus, touching your joints, touching your spine, the spirit of God, the word of God, the medicine, the quickening is moving through every part of your body because you are proactively, aggressively stirred to take it and to resist anything that is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Praise God. Father, we see, just see it flowing from your head to your toes. See the Spirit of God just washing over you, flowing through you, and driving out everything that is not of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be it unto us, Father, according to your word. Be it unto us according to your word, that with long life you will satisfy us. We will live and not die according to disease. Praise God. We will finish our course. Hallelujah. By your stripes, we were healed. That is truth. That is truth. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I'll even go so far as to say my youth is renewed like the eagle. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
We receive it, Father. We receive it in the name of Jesus. This is a room full of stirred up people. We're not going to take it anymore. We're not going to lie down for it. We are going to stand up and stomp on it. And we're going to call ourselves healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm, I'm seeing someone with perhaps scoliosis, some kind of spine issue. I'm seeing that thing straighten right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Diabetes has come to me a couple of times in this prayer, and I, I am rebuking diabetes in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The other thing I was seeing is heart disease. I'm speaking pure, clean, restored, recreated hearts in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Whether I speak out your issue or not doesn't matter. The word is alive for every issue. You get stirred up. You take it. You proclaim it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we give you the praise and the glory in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God.